Good evening. Another protest ends in violence tonight. Kevin Duncan, nephew of Councilman and political activist Malachi O'Shea Edwards, was shot and killed by police after resisting officers. We have video of Councilman Edwards apparently threatening Commissioner Claude Nelson. We are getting breaking news. It appears that rookie officer Clark Castle has been shot and killed inside his own home. We don't want to speculate, but we can be sure that eyes are beginning to turn towards Councilman Edwards. Together, we can make change. Together, we can make this state better. Together, we can make this whole country better. And welcome back to How You Living on Edge Radio Network. So today we have extraordinaire writer, producer, creator, director, er, director <laughs> Eric Hunter. Yay! Hey. Welcome Hello. to the show. Thank you for so having we me. just saw a preview of O'Shea. So yeah. one, what is O'Shea okay. about, and where'd you get the name from? Definitely. Um. So start off with the name. The name I got really got from Ice Cube. Um, I know it's kind of blatant, but I thought <laughs> I was thinking of a name of somebody who, you know, I grew up, you know, looking at and so forth. And I thought of him. He was a strong uh, person within, uh, you know, my childhood, just the music he made, what he stood for and just telling the truth, reality raps, all of that. So mm-hmm. I, I took that name and I ran with it. Right. Right. Um, and then I came up with this this show. Um, the show was birthed out of tragedy. Um, and I put everything into the show from that tragedy. So uh, with this, you know, I was wanting to be councilman. 
So I made this character a councilman. You wanted to be a councilman? Yeah. That's good to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I was in Aurora, Colorado, uh -huh. and my goal was to be a councilman. Um, and when I didn't go that route, I said, well, let me put everything that I wanted, all my ideas, thoughts, so forth, okay. everything else, into this character. And, and let it flow throughout that character. And then you can affect change on the world that way. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. We nice. always would. So a little background of you. Uh, mm -hmm. for you. You're from Houston originally? I was born in Houston. Okay. I lived in Houston until I was six or seven well, oh. until seven okay um reason why i moved um me and my cousin were playing rock, cops and robbers oh. in the backyard and he had a, a pellet bb gun and he shot me in the head and when he shot me in the head the bullet went in oh. and then it went over and it lodged here um oh. so they raced me to the hospital did all this stuff and they said well if we pull the bullet out then it'll kill him Whoa. Um, so they couldn't put a bullet out. They had to leave it there. So you see here. How I old? Five. How seven? old were you? I was seven. Okay. I was seven. Oh, so man. when that happened, you know, that brought my family together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they prayed for me, everything like that. I made it through. Um, the bullet's still there, mended with my skull. But from there, I moved to Aurora, Colorado. And that's where I grew up and spent most of my formidable years uh -huh. um, figuring out who I am. You went to school there as well, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, how's your cousin? How did he it, handle that? He's good. He went to the army. Did he feel? Oh wow! He's like, I'm good at shooting. I can aim. I can aim. I got a I trigger happy finger anyway. Well, so, I love him. Um, so but how you was guys it? are good. You yeah, guys good. are good. And how good. was it growing there? Growing um, up there. In Aurora, I mean, it was great. Uh, Colorado, you get all four se all four seasons. Okay. It's a nice place. There are black people there. I was going to ask, how's the diversity there? <laughs> right. Is there some diversity? There's a lot of di there's a lot of diversity in Aurora, Colorado. That's good in Colorado, to know. Period. That's good um, to know. I mean, you get a lot of different people there. Uh, people are pretty nice generally. Uh -huh. uh, you have your ghettos. You have your rich areas. You have all Ooh. that. But it's just a good mixture. Okay. So, so how was that shift from being in this good area and mixture of everything? bring you to a drama of O'Shea. How, what was that transition about? So that whole, the whole thing came from, like I mentioned earlier, tragedy, right? Right. So in 2012, I went to a movie, I don't see the dark night. Um, and I was involved in a massacre. Um, a man by the name of James Holmes came in and he shot up the movie theater that I was at. Um, so we're in one movie theater. This movie theater here is one that he shot up. And, and the, the famous, Aurora Massacre, that's right. what they call it, basically, Aurora Massacre. right? And Bullets came through the wall, so forth and so on. Um, you know, with, with me sitting in that theater, um, you know, we just thought it was firecrackers, just them trying to make it special. Right. Oh. Smoke started coming into our movie theater from Whoa. there. Yeah. So how did you personally handle this? With um, Well, from there, what I did was, you know, I, you know, once I realized something was off, mm -hmm. I told the two people I, were with, I was with, mm -hmm. I'm going to go and see what's going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I got up, I started walking down the stairs. I seen blood on the floor. I seen oh. people kind of leaning out their seats or getting hit. Um, so I yelled up to my friends. I said, there's somebody shooting here. We got to get out of here. Uh. So me, I guess not thinking, but right. thinking, I said, let me go down and try to find a way out. I went down. I went across the screen, went to the emergency exit, opened right. the door. There was two young white girls there. There was okay. one shot in the mouth, one shot in the shoulder. Oh, um, man. And I froze a second. Right. And then the door started closing. I opened the door again. She said, please help us. Please help us bring us in. Right. Somebody's shooting in our theater. So I brought, I brought them in. And as I brought them in, the shooter was coming around. Whoa. Um, SWAT outfit, gun, oh. so forth and so on. And I shut the door on him, hold it for like three seconds. Um, but I'm thinking, I don't want to get shot. Right, because he was so, shot through the door. Right. That's what I was thinking. Right. So I said, let me let it go. Let me go back in. I go in to check on the young girls. There's an off-duty paramedic there. He's saying, hey, would you like me to help them? I'm off-duty paramedic. Right. I said, yes, please. Course, yeah. I back up. I call my wife at the time. Mm -hmm. She didn't answer. She called right back. We said our sorries and last goodbyes because right. I didn't know what was going on. Right. right. You might not. Right. You know, right. I might not make it out. Absolutely. So from there, um, I, I, I get off the phone with her. Um, I go over by the wall to see, is this really real? Yeah, it's real. There's bullets in the, in the wall. Mm -hmm. um, so from there, I tell the people, hey, we need to find a fire alarm. We need to we need to let the firefighters know we're here. Somebody know we're here. Right. So we're looking for the fire alarm. We find the fire alarm behind the two women, that two girls oh, I brought in. Good. And I said, let's call the cops. We call the cops. Um, then from there, you know, these off-duty uh, cops come in. I didn't know they were off-duty cops. They're right. just saying, I need everybody to get out. Right. Me just being the person I am, I said, I don't think anybody should leave from here until we see a badge, gun, spot, right. something. I don't right. want to die today. I don't right. think that they do either. So, you know, they scoffed at me and went back out, came back in, guns, put your hands up, hands up and move out. So moved out. Um, moving out, the things I saw, the blood, the bodies, the, the, the screams, the alarms, all of that never went away. Never went away. Um, wow. But the thing that I learned that night was a couple of things. I learned 
I didn't want to die. I loved helping people right. and that I want to make a change in this world of difference. Mm -hmm. A couple other things I learned was, you know, at the time being a black man in America, right. um, I was like, okay, well, cops are this way, cops are that way. Right. After cops, basically, that's how, right. you know, we kind of grew right. up. That night, my perception on cops changed because the paramedics, the real paramedics, like in full force and ambulances, they couldn't get through the, the parking lot. It was too crowded, too many people, too many cars. Mm -hmm. So the cops used their cop cars, went in, grabbed people one by one, put them in the back wow. of the cop car and took them. And that showed me not all cops are bad. Right. Mm, it's right. not all cops. That's so true. from that tragedy, me wanting to be a councilman before that, I said, no councilman, this kind of messed me up. And I said, let me put all these ideas and everything into O'Shea. Right. And that's how I connected those two. Okay. Um, it was birthed out of tragedy. Wow. So even so, even after that tragic situation, mm -hmm. are you still having those or those nightmares? And you know, how did you how did you work yourself through right. that tragedy? A couple things, you know, for for that, it took me probably five years, five wow. or six years to really right. work through the PTSD of it. Yeah. I didn't really go and see anybody. Because mm. you know, again, in, in our community, yeah. it's like, you don't go see somebody, you right. go to church. You go to church. You we pray. talked about that last week. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. right, you go see the pastor. That's it, and if you and don't see the pastor, therapy. talk to God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know that's right. You that's know, right. so that was my thing. You know, I, I was I was abiding by those rules mm -hmm. that we were, that, that, that was set up in, in our, our in our community. So I was, I just went through, and at the time I worked for a hospital. I was in ER radiology ring, wing, and uh, I couldn't work in the hospital industry anymore right. because every time an alarm went off, of it took me back there. I would start freaking out freaking. the alarms. It would yeah. trigger me, and yeah. I'd go and sit in my administrative uh, mm -hmm. uh, manager. I'd sit in her office right. and wait for it to go by. And we had people coming in, you know, with their their mouth slit open, yeah. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. So imagine ha having this good paying job and then losing it because of the tragedy. Been, yeah, right. Right. You really probably could have got disability if you were that kind of person. Right. But I'm <laughs> you know? not. So I did you not. did you ever get counseling or no? I just even there are things that I set up in my head. Like a week after, I said I'm going back to the movie theaters. Mm -hmm. I, this is something you I'm have not, to be your own therapist at this I point. I had to. Right. When I didn't have much money for two, I didn't want to be a victim. Yep. That was my thing. I didn't want to be a victim. And I felt like if I succumb to all these different potential victim mentality, mm -hmm. uh, you know, perceptions that, that would be put on me, I would lose. Right. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going back to the movies. I'm going to see the movie. I went back and seen the movie, even though it was hard. That After is. that, I said, okay, I need to figure this out. I need to figure out what works for me. Um, it took a lot of me, right? I like, I lost a lot of confidence in myself. A lot of, I lost a lot of belief in myself, my relationship, my marriage at the time was very rocky. Um, a lot of these different things. And I had to really like get a notepad and write a lot of things out by myself. Affirmations. You are this, you are that, you're not this. And it took five years. So I ended up, it took five years. It changed. How did you get into this industry? I that's a heck of a way to Well, you know, but that's an introduction that we need to, we can talk yeah. about that on our break. So okay, let's, because that's, that's a lot to it's unplug. Yeah. And that's, a, that's a lot of information, yeah, a right? Multifaceted man. So we got here. join us is when we come back and talk to Mr. Eric Hunter, and he'll tell us how he did that shift from all that tragedy into becoming a creative person force yeah that has uh that's going to really shift and change the world sure. you don't have to be a councilman you can find your <laughs> niche right. to change the world and, so and entertain at and entertain <laughs> <laughs> what i'm gonna do with her Outside. so join us <laughs> it'll take a little short break and uh, come back and join us so we can find out more about o'Shea be right back And welcome back to How You Living with director, creator, writer, producer, extraordinaire, <laughs> Eric Hunter. <laughs> and so we have a, we also allow people to ask us questions through okay. Facebook. Nice. And nice. so, cause we are on Facebook live. So mm -hmm. guys send us questions yes. so that we can ask Mr. Hunter. This is your chance. This if is you, your chance. If you want an audition, this is your chance to reach out to him directly. <laughs> but we won't ask unless you send the question. All the good actors only, please. <laughs> no fakes. Okay. One question we have from, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, he wants to know if you've done any acting prior to this. Okay. 
Have you have you done acting yourself? Yeah, I, I actually started off in the industry by being an actor oh. um, back when I had more hair. Uh, and it's true. <laughs> I started off as I an actor. Pro, you know what? I don't know that much. But <laughs> Antron would get on me on business partner. He'd have a lot of jokes. Okay. But no, I started off as an actor. Um, and, you know, I just got the bug. I was naturally good with being able to improvise. Okay. So I would go to these uh, art schools and I would just be talent. Nice. I would be talent and, and I would just go in there so they could just set up the cameras, do what they need to do. Then I went on from there and I did different commercials. Oh. Like I did a, a veterans commercial for the veterans coming home on PTSD nice. um, and, and so forth and so on. So I got into that world and then I transitioned into the fact that I'm creative. I love to write. I want to direct. I want to produce. I want to make something. Wow. And that's how I transitioned into Very that. cool. We got All one right. more question before okay. we, because it's related to Aurora. Yeah. Then we're so move on. Andrew okay. from Facebook asks, is that, are you doing anything about your movie experience with Aurora? Are you creating anything behind that? I am. I'm writing a book Good at the question. moment. I'm starting uh, the process of writing a book um, based on my events. So it's not really on the actual shooting, but it's on my life that day, that week leading up to the shooting and covering the shooting, putting nice. you in the shoes of a, a survivor, or right. somebody who went through that. And then I'm making a movie. The script is already done. So right now, now we're approaching uh, uh, investors for that. Nice. So with that, <clears throat> the goal is every time there's a shooting, we grieve and we mourn and uh -huh. then we say, hmm, next, yeah. and we move on. No, it has right. something has to happen. That's right. Like when that forget. happened, because the they always say, "I don't want to be a hashtag. I don't want my loved one to be a hashtag." Right. Do something about it. The things that I saw, like I saw a little girl that I know was they after research writing the movie, she was alive in the in the theater, uh -huh. and then on the way out, them trying to save her, she died. She oh. was shot. Mm -hmm. She was shot and died. Her mom was shot, and and she lost the baby. Shot in the stomach. Oh, lost her baby. Boy. Her dad was shot and, and was paralyzed. That's just one story. Right. You understand what right, I'm saying? Right. right. So, so with me, I had survivor's grief, and I thought I should be, I should die. I thought I shouldn't be here because mm. they got to live, because they they died and I got to live. So I felt horrible for that for a long time, right. and it took a while <clears throat> to get over that. <clears throat> so back home, you know, they, because you have that survivor's remorse, that's or right. whatever it's called. But then you got to think about the duality of the fact yeah. that in my community back home in Aurora, they think I'm a hero, a right. co hero is what they call me. Is right? that why that I was trying mm -hmm. to understand how? So what I is it? it? What is it? Yeah. A co hero? Oh, Aurora, Colorado. That's what a co that's stands for. And so heroes, they did that for a lot of the survivors, or they did that for a lot of different people who they felt did something. Nice. Um, okay. And then they 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 hold the the survivors and they wrap their arms around them. We I do it. We're community. And then the different people like me that felt like, well, he's a hero. But me, I just felt like I was doing something that I would want to be done for my kids. Right. You know, so nice. I, I, I've, I've watched this young lady from afar. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who was shot, had to re have reconstructive surgery. Yeah. And I've seen her, you know, progress. She got better. She got married, all this stuff. So I'm just happy that that happened. Yeah. But I'm no hero. I'm just a person who did what was supposed to be done. And see, that's so now, spoken like a true hero. So how did, how did the <laughs> shift from that go into you creating? Definitely. So yeah. I, was, I was always a creator. That was always in my mind. So I went from there to, okay, I want to make a change in this world. So I had all these different dreams and goals. It wasn't just film. So first I had this idea of a uh, innovation, uh, making a product that can basically change the retail industry. So I came up with this technology where you can uh, you can use the technology within stores and, and eliminate employees and cashiers and you can buy just from these smart units and keep this, the food hot, cold, and room temperature, eliminating mm -hmm. uh, shrinkage and so forth and so on. So that was first. Then I, after that, I said, I want to do movies. So I said, okay, let me do movies. And I started writing. I sucked. I sucked. Really <laughs> and then from there, I got better and better. So I became a one-man band. I said, let me learn how to write, produce, direct, uh, edit, score, everything. And that's what I did. Came here. I met up with um, a lot of different great people. And then it led me to my business partner, which is Antron Harris. Well, let me ask you something mm -hmm. just to interrupt real quick. So with you learning how to write, produce, was this something that you taught yourself or did you go through some kind of you know program no. or no film wow. school no film school can i just go ahead can you give us a synopsis about this um o'shea give yeah. us an uh what's yeah. it about basically definitely um i'll give you the whole rundown so Great. o'shea is basically about a man who saw his father killed and shot in front of him by a, by a corrupt cop at the age of 13. Okay. from there he grew up and he went through a lot of different things ups and downs um and then he said, I want to make a change in this world. Mm -hmm. And so he became the, the councilman uh, in, within his community. From there, he said, I want to bring justice to what happened to my father. Nobody else knows the secret he has. The fact that that, council, or that, that corrupt cop killed his father. That corrupt cop became the governor of Texas. So that, <laughs> See, I didn't have bump. that. I didn't realize that. I thought the councilman was crooked. It's no, he was trying to save the, uh, he was trying to get avenge his father. Exactly. Okay, wow. so then that, so what, What's his name? His name is O'Shea. 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 He's so the protagonist. Malachi O'Shea Malachi Edwards. O'Shea yes. Edwards. Nice. He's the good okay. guy. 
Max Hildart is the bad guy, and Max Hildart is a leader and, and, and founder of a group called the Red State Militia. Ooh. And that's basically like this Boy, that white sounds real. Yeah. So <laughs> they're, they're basically trying to employ, you know, put their whole ideology upon the world. They, they feel they should save the world and the community by right. using their ideology, uh -huh. and they want to they want to put these different chips in the back of people's necks. Oh, my like goodness. Like Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah, that's like right up my alley. Yeah. So it's, it's that kind of thing. It's, it's real exciting. It's real exciting. So it's, it's a drama? It's a drama. It's a political drama. Okay, no sci-fi. there. No, well, you know, th this, I'll put it to you like this. When O'Shea dreams, uh -huh. sci-fi comes out. Wow. So he has these different dreams and visions. You can't be, you can't be an O'Shea and not have some kind of... Uh, no. Right. I'm you sorry, strike me as the type who might have a little sci-fi in you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a little That's versatile. Would you do comedy at some point? I know yes. it's hard to do comedy. Oh, I love comedy. Really? I, love, I got this other show called Broke Ghost Hunters. And it's basically the broke ghost hunters. The broke ghost hunters. Okay. Yeah, All they, right. they use. I can already <laughs> see what they look like. They, yeah, they they broke. Okay. And then they use their phones and they use oh like vacuum God. cleaners to get the ghosts. They Is have the that phones out? Are, Is it somewhere where we there, can see there's it? There's a first episode out that the uh, <clears throat> oh, actually the star one, out. one of the stars of the show he actually passed on. He was in a car accident. Oh, really? So the whole oh. thing is that and that guy was actually the first O'Shea as I'm well. Very sorry so, to so, hear that. So so the the. You have a production company. Yes. And so this is, so how many uh, projects do you have in the works other than the O'Shea and the Broke Ghost Hunters? No, you did, you did. Okay, so uh, with that company, it's called H&H uh, &H Studios, Hunter and Harris. Uh, okay. Me and my partner, Antron Harris, we're the owners of that company. We right now have O'Shea, which you know about. We have Broke Ghost Hunters, which is the comedy. <laughs> but from O'Shea, I mm -hmm. created a universe. So I did with what uh, Marvel does, right? All right. <clears throat> I created a universe, and there's six shows that are spinning off from that, which we already dropped the teasers for all of them oh at the premiere. Goodness. So nice. you have teasers for all and six busy. shows plus O'Shea, yes. Okay. Now, these these spinoffs, you have one that's following the gorillas, which is all by any means necessary. Okay. You have Flashpoint Hospital, which is taking, taking a look at the... Uh, the racism within the medical industry. Hmm. Oh, that, I just read a story about that this it's morning. Real. It's very real. It's real. And it's beyond and so, America. And so exactly. how many how many spinoffs do you have from O'Shea? We have cool. six spinoffs. Yeah, oh, okay. Wow. Now on top of that, we have uh, 712, which is the one about the shooting. Then we have uh, What Do You Do, which is a like speed type of, like like speed, the, sh the movie is right. like a show based off how of something like that. How will you handle something like exactly. that? Exactly, exactly. Wow. So hmm. it's just, we're, we're, looking to, we're looking to really grow. We, I'll put it to you like this. Instead of trying to go to Hollywood, we want to make Hollywood come to us. Nice. You know, we're, we're, like Tyler Perry said, you know, stop trying to get a chair at the table, make your own table. And that's what we've yeah. done. We've that's made our beautiful. own table. So, so help me to understand because I'm, I'm not in that industry at all. Definitely. So you create the show, mm -hmm. you then you go film, and then you mm -hmm. try to shop it to networks to put it on their platform. Is that right. how it works? So if you're in film, you're going to get a lot of jewels today. Right. Yeah. A lot of stuff that people don't know right. if you're just trying to make films. Absolutely. A lot of times people, they make a film and they say, oh, I hope we get picked up. Right. But there's a science to it. And I didn't know this until, you know, we went through everything with O'Shea. You basically, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to come up with, with whatever you want, right? Whatever you want to make the show about. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you need to make something called a uh, lookbook. For, with that lookbook, that's going to show everything within that show, what it's going to be like, the tone, so forth and so on. You want to make your lookbook. After you make the lookbook, you want to make a if it's a if it's a show, you want to make a TV Bible. And the, okay. yeah, TV Bible, you cover a uh, summary for all five seasons, mm -hmm. or for all five uh, yeah seasons. Uh -huh. Then you want to talk about every character, who all you want. Um, how it's going to go from top to bottom, what to refer back to, what the colors mean, and Whoa. everything. So that they have the entire vision. The entire vision. And, and even, how the, even how the exactly. yeah. even how the character is going to develop, you put it right. in that Bible. Because I always exactly. wonder, for instance, like Tyler, you might mm -hmm. get, the, he has maybe 15 episodes. Right. I'm like, did they know on the third episode what was going to transpire yep. on 15? But you know what's funny that's about that? Know. Knowing See, that's that, good to know. Knowing that you guys have that Bible. Because sometimes you go, why did they go left? But they right. had planned but to go you, left from already. the beginning. From before you shot one episode or one episode. So you're you picked know. up by Apple TV. So right now we're going to be on Apple. We're going to be on uh, Amazon. And we're going to be on Seggy TV. Oh, really? But, you mean Amazon but, Prime? Yes. But this this is the thing. But, but, okay. but. This is what we're looking to do. Because okay. we're in, in talks right now with a couple different investors. Okay. We're trying to get on HBO and get that locked in. That's the goal. Wow. That's yes, goal. that's it. Because mm -hmm. that's how, um, as we know, Issa Rae, she started out on YouTube. Exactly. And now she's all kinds of rich. Look, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you like this. When me and Antron started this off, it was just me and him. We had no money and we had a phone. And a lot of what you've seen in that uh -huh. preview, we did everything on the phone. That, that's I did Apple the, phone, the huh? scoring, the filming, <laughs> wow. the editing on the phone. So did you film everything in Houston? 
We filmed ninety uh, percent of it in Houston. Okay. Fifty percent of it was filmed on the phone. The other fifty percent was Chris Osby, which is an amazing DP. Amazing. We shot some in Huntsville. We shot some in Port Lavaca. Okay. And the city of Port Lavaca really helped. The city of Huntsville really helped. And then right. here we just guerrilla filmed it. Now we have Tyrone Dixon on board, who okay. created Roll Bounce. He worked on Hustle and Flow. He's our coach. Oh wow. We go out there and we we knock Look it out. Yeah. Well, you know we're about to go down another rabbit hole, so let's take a little break, <laughs> bring down I the temperature a, a little bit, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and so when we come back, we're gonna get more of Mr. Hunter's information and yeah. find out even more how to watch his awesome shows yeah. and see if someone is interested, one, at being an investor. Maybe, Maybe you want to get in oh, contact. Yeah. Hello. And two, and then again, auditions. Auditions. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so t we're going to take a little short break and when we come back, we're going to get all that information for you. Join us. Higher. Higher The Natural Nation Network is really about taking control of your health physically, spiritually, emotionally, even intellectually, because there's so much out there in misinformation. There's a lot of people now that are suffering from all sorts of diseases that they really wouldn't have to suffer for if they had better information. And that's what we're here to do, provide information that can save lives. The mind and the body are totally, totally connected. Health can be really serious. And you know, sometimes we just have to lighten it up a little bit while we're still providing substantive information. And you know, my, my sort of mantra on the salsa dance floor is kind of similar. You know, I tell somebody, if you make a mistake twice, it becomes a move, okay? <laughs> so, so. Tune into Natural Nation every Tuesday at 11 a.m. And welcome back to How You Living. So we just have so many questions for Mr. Hunter that we're gonna have a little speed round. So Rob is gonna ask questions and we're gonna see how quick we can go with some quick questions. <laughs> okay, I'll make them go. How did you find your actors? <laughs> um, I went and I went through Antron Harris, my uh, producer. He okay. had a lot of people already in the in the theater industry, so they, they came on through. Is he the star? Well, he's the well. star. He's, he's the O'Shea. star. He is yes. O'Shea. Okay. He's a force. <laughs> how, how are you doing auditions? Are you still doing auditions for upcoming yes. projects? We are going to be doing auditions in the next couple of months going forward. We always need new people, so definitely reach out to us. Eric Hunt Dog on Instagram and O'Shea Words of Bullets on Facebook. Okay, last question from uh -huh. the speed round. Did COVID have any impact on how you guys produced oh, your... I could do a whole episode on that. Yes. Okay. We, there's, okay. there's all kind of precautions. Because how you act with a mask on? You know? we, had, we had to do... Okay, mask on, mask off. Mask on, mask wow. off. It was in there. There's okay. a lot of places we couldn't fit. It was just a lot. Okay. It's and that was a question from an audience member. Got you. Good question. Okay, so... <laughs> Woo! Okay, that was a quick little you. speed thank round. You. So, well, thank you. She accommodated me. I appreciate so, uh, that. Mr. Hunter, Mr. Eric Hunter. Yes. What was your contact wait one more time for mm -hmm. people to get in contact with you? Definitely. So on Instagram is Eric Hunt Dog. That's uh That's my Instagram time. link or my Instagram tag. And then on Facebook is Eric Hunter. Just look me up uh, that way. Email is E D H Wow Seven at gmail.com. Oh, so all our guests, we ask them to drop a little nugget of knowledge. Mm. Okay. 
So um, now you can drop a little nugget. I can't believe it's of so knowledge. late already. What you got for us? I got you. Uh, for for me, I would say no matter what your dream is, go for it. If you fall, you fail. If you fall forward, fail fast because you're gonna fail at some point. It's okay. It's okay to fail. But it's okay to fail and keep going. You cry to keep going. You never quit. It doesn't matter what you lose. You never give up. You never stop. I lost so much. I lost my marriage that I, that I had. My kids had to move out of state, but we kept going. We had tragedy, Harvey. We had COVID. We had so much going. We kept going. I don't quit in life. I got shot in the head. I almost died in the movie theater. I flipped over on the side of a mountain four times. Oh. Everything that you could think of that could happen to a person happened to me, and I'm still here. And right now, we have... O'Shea, we have 712 that's gonna be coming out. We're doing a book. We have Dolo Go, which is a very innovative uh, technology that we're bringing to the front. We have, I have a streaming company called ZME, which is basically gonna mend Netflix and Zoom together and make it a full thing. We have a lot going on, but it's all because I didn't quit. Uh, and, and I built a great team. On O'Shea, we have over 100 people on that team already. Nice. So 102. 102. They're, they're, we just, they're, they're here now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, I told you, we're going to do what, what we can to promote oh, you. Absolutely. So, so it's like, I'm still you. here. Now, is it too <laughs> late? We have one more question. No, That's we're it's, a, it's our time. It's, it's time, time to go. go. It's, it's a done question. So that tells you that we're going to have to have, have you back. We have to bring you back. back. I'm, I'm, I'm you willing know? to bring you back. I love so we're going to put you in. So. We're going to have him back, and he's going to tell us more about his shows. Maybe you could bring your partner at that yes. time also. Is there a schedule Definitely. right now, or is it just on demand? Um, it's going to be on demand. We're going to okay. we're going to make a big thing about releasing okay, it, and great. you guys will get all the information very soon. Oh, soft. nice. So when okay. then you'll be back and coming. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a great time. Yeah, y'all have me. We got to oh, oh, we'll we'll definitely you. be bringing Antron back. Yes. If he's interested, we'd love to oh, bring him back. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. He's just called. Woo! You're that talking was, about I a mean, power Dan's hour. lies when you're having a superstar on the show. I know, right? Shoot. Superstar. Well, thank you. thank you, and thank thank you for keeping me, reining me in. I know, you know, <laughs> that yin and yang, do, that yeah. yin and yang. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, thank you we guys for joining you. us you. with How You Living Radio on Monday. Yep, and we will see you guys next Monday if the good Lord's willing. <laughs> so, um, in the meantime, we got to always ask our people, How, how You, you Living? living? <laughs> Good job.